Hi hey everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my first ever booktube bubble. This one being books I wish to see adapted for screen. Now the booktube bubbles are an idea related directly to the booktube SFF award, which is an award created originally by Elizabeth from Books and Pieces, I think three years ago now. I could be mistaken, it could be four maybe, I'm not entirely sure now. And it's been going ever since. Indeed, Elizabeth is still behind the scenes as the sort of mastermind of the project, and she does a really good job of it as well. Now, there is a good read group for um, the Booktube Awards as well, and read alongs and things, which I will link in the description box below. I rarely talk about it because I rarely actually take part in the discussions on the books themselves. However, I do follow them, despite, and despite never actually talking about it, because I find them very interesting to see what types of ideas people have. And it gives me a lot of inspiration for types of videos to make and indeed for types of books to read. I do actually like them, I just don't directly take part. Just one of them things. Anyway, this one is about uh, books, obviously, that I'd like to see on either the television screen or the movie screen. You will notice that most of the choices that I've, I'm going to be making are generally for television screen because I personally find that in most cases, uh, books to movies often don't work out as well as books to TV, television series. Admittedly, books to television series are more recent, of course, what with you know, Game of Thrones and many others, you know, the expanse and such, been made into extremely successful television series. It's caught on and doing really well. Movies, you know, being converted from books, that's been going on for a very long time indeed. But Generally, I do find television series work better because you've got more time to expand the idea than books generally have more ideas than anything else. So, at least it's the type I read anyway. There are six things I'm going to be talking about, and the first of those is the Mars Trilogy by Kim Stanley Robinson. This is comprised of Red Mars, Green Mars, and Blue Mars. It might not sound very imaginative, but actually, it's fairly direct and very um, directly related to the ideas of each book. In this, a small team of 100 people go to Mars to colonise it. Green Mars is about their efforts to try to terraform it, and Blue Mars, an extension of that. And they, these are very large books, as you can tell by the sheer size of them. They're very epic in scale, they're science fiction, and they would work well for television series, not a film, because the film just couldn't contain this. I mean, no film could. I mean, you'd need a trilogy just to do one book. Then you need a trilogy to use second minimum. It'd be a mess, frankly. You couldn't do it. Television series would work very well. And indeed, this is actually the only choice out of the six that I know is actually already been optioned many years ago for some kind of televised treatment, whether that's movie, uh, television, I don't know. But it's been an idea for many years. Nobody's ever done anything with it, as far as I'm aware. But the possibility is there. It has lots of characters, these grand ideas, and the setting works very, very well. And what we've obviously the interest in um, all the world at the moment, due to like, various probes and things, this would also work out well, timing-wise, within the next few years, I personally think. The next book is actually three books, and these would make for a very good animated TV series in particular. And these are the Bad Lag books by China Miable. These are Peter Joe Street Station, the Scar and Iron Council. Now, these are not direct sequels of the first book. These are just happen to be set in the same world, which is called Bazlag. These are very strange and weird and wonderful books. This world has all sorts of strange magics and strange creatures in them. Turning them into a um, live action, you know, normal television series with actual actors playing the parts <laughs> could work, but there's so much strange species and strange locations that I'm not really sure how they would do that because some of the species are very strange indeed. Animated however would work very very well and what we've obviously really good voiceovers and just re extremely good animation which is obviously is pretty standard nowadays. These would work really well because you'd have the really weird and fantastical um, scenes and locations along with amazing characters with brilliant voices. I mean, the voiceovers that would work for this could be astonishing. It really could. You know, um, voice actors would 
be very successful doing this, I think. So I would love to see this turn into something. Even if it's not directly these books, just stories set in this world, I think would work, frankly. The next book is also not just one book, but it's actually a trilogy. And thankfully, it's the last book, uh, set of books out of this six, that is actually by a male author. The other three are now going to be by female authors. And that is the Void Trilogy by Peter F. Hamilton. This comprises the Dreaming Void, the Temporal Void, and the Evolutionary Void. Now, these are the first three books I ever read by Peter F. Hamilton about, what, eight years ago now? I've read every single book by Peter F. Hamilton at this point. I'm a big fan of his. These, I think, out of all his books, would work best as a television series. Now, all the books that he's wrote could work, but I think these lend themselves really accurately because these are epic um, space opera uh, science fiction books. They have a grand plot line, multiple characters over multiple locations. The locations are exotic and varied. The plot line is highly complex. There's intrigue, mystery, politics, you know, people backstabbing each other here and there. This has everything you could imagine that a modern TV series has in abundance. And obviously what with the science fiction setting, what with you know, trains that go through wormholes onto other planets, which is one that uh, is an idea that I've mentioned before that I love. And just the other ideas I think is frankly amazing. The visuals and the scale of this could be amazing. It would be quite a lot of work because you've also got a different plot line within the books. I'm not going to say what that is, although I have done a review of these. And these could be truly epic in terms of scale and just feel. It'd be a fantastic atmosphere for these three books, it really would. The fourth thing I'm going to talk about is actually quite new. They were only released last year and there's two books to this. And that is The Lady Astronaut um, Books by Mary Robinette Cowell. These are The Calculating Stars and The Fated Sky respectively. There will be more books set within this world and indeed about the same primary character, at least two more books and which will expand this universe which I think is a brilliant one because the main character is a um, female fighter pilot previously now she works for the equivalent of NASA this is alternative history Earth where a meteor hits Earth devastates the United States it changes the world order quite a lot and basically humanity now wants to go to the stars because uh, a lot of the resources on Earth have been heavily damaged or contaminated and things and a lot, there's a lot of um, you know problems with obviously climate change is now going out of control much faster than ever before which obviously is already a problem now but this is even worse and this world and the characters would work extremely well for probably I would say actually movies rather than a television series. A television series could work but I think movies would have that sort of shorter snappy uh, feel to them that these books also happen to have in spades because these are extremely well written the characters are fantastically well developed they've got the humour to them, they've got true depth to them, they've got emotion to them you feel for the characters in these books you know for the main characters and indeed even the, even the smaller less support characters you feel for for that reason alone for the character development this would work for films because television series might lose certain things over time maybe Films would keep to it, I think, quite closely. I think that actually works surprisingly well as movies, actually. The next book is just a single book. I think this would work well as a television series, although there are certain parts of it that I am very unsure how they would actually do it. And that is Semiosis by Sue Burr. Now, this might seem a strange choice if you've read the book, because one of the characters in the book is, let's just say, tricky to work on screen you will know what character i mean he's a sort of large person let's say and um his way of communicating with people and his just physical presence is very he's very alternative but i think it could work well because this book is already fairly episodic in the nature you know you follow different sets of characters within a larger group and you could keep switching between them over time that's how the story is told that would work well could work well for a film i suppose but it would work much better for a television series i just don't know how they would 
do that t uh, that one main character though, which is a very significant character. But if they could do that character well, this would work rather well because it's got all the things that comprise a good series. It probably wouldn't be an ongoing or super long television series. You know, it wouldn't be like a ten season um, run. It'd probably only be a few seasons. I, I suspect probably feel four in a shorter one, but it'd still work extremely well and it'd still be, I think, personally popular. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is not just one book in one series, but it's actually, well, say, more than two different series, although they are related, is The Vatter's War Universe by Elizabeth Moon. The first book in the Vatter's War series is Trading in Danger, and the first book in the Vatter's Peace series, which is currently two books, is Cold Welcome. This is actually quite new. This was only released, what, last year or the year before? This was released over 10 years ago now. These could work in a very interesting way because the television series, which I would suggest rather than a movie, could work because it would not follow directly, not, I mean unless they wanted to, the plot of these books. Now the book, plot of these books is um, there's an attack on a member, on the members of the uh, Vata family, which is this big trading family in this sort of, you know, this solar system full of people that travel between uh, planets and such. Um, and basically the survivors and one in particular Kai Vata or Kai Lara Vata she is very military minded she's one of the very few military minded members of the family most of them are sort of traders by nature she's military minded and the big epic sort of adventure in space with spaceships and things going from there let's say I've talked about these before and I love these books they are brilliant this book continues it um, a few years later which I'm not going to talk about that now so I to say, these would work, not just necessarily on the plots of these books, but you could just use the character of Kai Vata and the Vata family and this universe to base stories off. I mean, I think, uh, actually, a series which is based uh, some years after the events of this book, say 10 years after, where Kai Vata is now in her 40s, she's still as strong-minded as ever before, the world has moved on a bit, a new situations arise and such within her world of strategy and things would work extremely well because she's a fantastical character you have the history that you could explore from these books that could be mentioned in, in passing and it could essentially be a television sequel to a book series which would actually be very curious to see I mean I personally can't think of any other series that I've ever done that where it's been a sort of almost a direct sequel to an actual book series I mean, if you know one, let me know, I'll be curious. But it could work really well because the visuals and the scale, again, could work very well. And the characters are interesting as well. They've got humour and comedy, but you've also got the sort of darker nature as well of some of the characters. So these would work extremely well. I mean, that's it. that is actually it for all of the books I think would work best, or at least all the ones I can actually think of currently for either a movie or a television deal. I'm not going to hold them up here like I normally would when I finish the video because I'll probably drop them all over the floor because there's more of a lot of them. Um, I would love to hear what your suggestions are and your, your ideas are for both television series and movies because I bet there's some that, that I own that I've just completely overlooked and actually there would probably be a fantastical idea if they were turned into um, you know, a screen project. So yeah, please leave me your suggestions and we can have a conversation about them. If you've got any book suggestions on books you think I might want to read based on any of these, then again, you know, please leave a comment. I'm always happy to get um, new book suggestions. And with that said, that is it for this video. I'll, I will link the links to the Goodreads group for the BookTube Bibles as well as anybody I mentioned, anything and else, along with my social media links in the description box below. With that said, that is it for this video, so thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.